If you want to get the best image out of your Canon EOS R10, then you found the perfect video because in this tutorial, I'll be sharing step-by-step -step on how you can get the best settings in two different scenarios. The best settings for vlogging, so you can set it and forget it. And then secondly, the best settings for stationary videos like this, or maybe you want to do video podcasting and things like that. So let's jump into it right now. You got to just press record. Hey, what's up? It's Amat Corey with Think Media. Now I would encourage you to grab your Canon EOS R10 to follow along in this video as that is the most effective way that you can get the most out of it. Secondly, feel free to change the speed of this video if I'm going too fast. Thirdly, save this video so that you can reference it in the future. And so with that being said, let's jump into the best settings for vlogging with the Canon EOS R10. Start by changing the movie mode by simply setting your camera's mode dial to video mode and then selecting movie auto exposure. Next, you're going to set the camera to record at 4K resolution. Press the Q button in the back of the camera, or you can even press the Q UI button on the screen and then select 4K 23.98. If you're concerned about storage space, select the IPB light setting for smaller file sizes. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you need to adjust the brightness or the exposure of your shot, then you're going to use the exposure compensation setting and simply tapping on that at the bottom of the screen. And there you can hit the plus icon to get a brighter image or hit the minus icon to darken the image, but setting it to zero is a great neutral position for most use cases. Now to lock in the best autofocus settings for vlogs, you're gonna then hit the Q button once again. And at the top left of the screen, you're gonna see AF, that's the AF area. We're gonna select that. And then you're gonna choose the area that makes the most sense. And I like using the whole area AF. And then that info button in the middle will enable or disable subject tracking. I like to enable that. So make sure you tap that and it says enable. And then lastly, you're going to hit the icon on the bottom right to make sure that subject to detect is on people and not animals or cars or vehicles. Now that you have that set, the camera's always going to detect people in a scene. But if you want to focus on something else, simply tap on the screen or whatever it is you want to focus on and the camera will then focus on that. Next, we're going to set our white balance to auto. So we're going to hit the Q button once again, go to the white balance option and head to AWB or auto white balance and select that. Now you have the option to choose what is called ambient priority or white priority with the difference being that ambient priority provides a warmer color cast in tungsten color environments, while white priority allows you to reduce the warm color cast to obtain a more accurate white balance scene. The one that kind of has my preference is just the basic auto white balance. So I'm just going to select that. Now let's talk about auto audio settings when it comes to vlogging. Though you can use the built-in mic on the camera to record your audio, using an external mic can make a big difference. Depending on your mic, first make sure that it's plugged into the mic jack input found at the bottom left of the camera. And if it so happens that your mic has a battery powered to it, just make sure that it's fully charged. Personally, when I use the Canon EOS R10 to vlog, I use Canon's external mic. It's called the DME100, which does have a cable that you plug right into the camera. This sounds great. Comes with a windscreen, which is super nice. But Canon also has a really cool mic called the DME1D, which plugs directly into the hot shoe of the camera and works digitally with no need for cables or batteries. A super cool, convenient solution for vlogging. And we'll be sure to post links down to everything in the description below so you can check it out yourself. Once you have your mic attached, press the menu button and navigate to the sound recording settings and change it from auto to manual. This will give you control over the mic level, which a good place to start with an external mic like this would be at 40%. And that would be good in most cases, but depending on the environment you're shooting in and the sounds that you're trying to capture, you would just adjust your audio from there. Once you change your sound recording settings from auto to manual, you can then adjust the gain inside of the normal menu by hitting the Q button. And then on the bottom left of the screen, adjust your audio setting accordingly that way, which is super convenient. Then you don't have to hop into the menu anymore. And then the final tip when vlogging with the Canon EOS R10 is to use a wide angle lens and a vlog grip, which Canon has great offerings. You can check out the RF 16 millimeter 2.8 STM lens, which is a super lightweight lens, but also gives you a nice wide shot and is also great for YouTube talking head videos which I'll get into the best settings in just a second. But if you want more versatility and the ability to zoom in and out, check out the RF 15 to 30 millimeter image stabilized STM lens if you need that versatility. Canon also has this really cool tripod grip for vlogging. It's called the HG100 TBR. And this is a combination tripod and hand grip. Gives you the ability to go vertical with the camera, which is great for reels, TikToks, and YouTube shorts. 
It also comes with a removable wireless Bluetooth remote so you can start and stop recording as needed. So now we're gonna dial in our camera settings for stationary videos like YouTube talking head videos, similar to what you're seeing right now, or even any video where your subject or yourself is not gonna be moving, like video podcasts or testimony videos and things like that. So we're gonna dial it in. And the first thing I would encourage you to do is to put the camera on a tripod and actually put the camera where you're gonna actually film and set up the shot because you're gonna set the settings based on the shot. And then you're gonna grab your light that you're gonna use to light your subject or yourself. Good rule of thumb is just right off to the side of the camera and shooting down at your face. And I'm aware that people have different kinds of lights, but if your light has the ability to change colors, like go warm or cold, I would encourage you to set it to a daytime temperature. So more on the cool side, but not too cold. And that's just a good rule of thumb because that's the kind of light you want hitting your face. As you can see, the light over my shoulder here is a lot more warm. That's not the light you want hitting your face. So just be sure to set your light to a good temperature and light your subject or yourself. And then we can then set up the camera using these settings to get the best image possible. Put the camera dial in video mode, or if it already is, you can also hit the Q button and then select the exposure setting and then select manual exposure. Next, you're gonna set the camera to make sure it records at 4K resolution by pressing the Q button or the Q UI button on the screen and then select 4K 23.98. Again, if you're concerned about storage size, then select the IPB light setting for smaller file sizes. Next, we're gonna dial in our exposure settings by dialing in our shutter speed, our aperture, and our ISO. Change your shutter speed to one over 50th of a second, and then you're gonna set your aperture as low as you can to get as much blurry background as you can. And in this case, I'm using the Canon 24 millimeter 1.8 lens, which shows you the power of putting a prime lens on a camera like this to get you that nice blurry background. At this point, it's a matter of dialing in your ISO to get the right exposure. And the best way to find that out is to just start at ISO 100 and then scroll up until the shot looks properly exposed or just reference the exposure meter and a good rule of thumb is to just have that at zero. And just something to keep in mind when it comes to lighting is that the camera will always look its best when you have the light coming on the subject and not coming from behind the subject. So just keep that in mind. Try avoid shooting in front of windows, rather use the window itself to actually light you or the subject. Next is autofocus settings, and it's pretty much the same as the vlog setup, but if you just jump to this portion, you're just gonna hit the Q button and then go to the top left, select autofocus area. Then you're gonna select whole area autofocus, and then you're gonna enable subject tracking by selecting the info button if it's not already enabled. And then make sure that your camera is set to people as subject detect. Now, if you wanna focus on something else in a stationary setup, just tap the screen and it'll focus using that Canon dual pixel autofocus. Now, locking in your white balance is pretty key and the best practice is usually to just set your Kelvin temperature. So hit the Q button, go into the white balance setting and head over to Kelvin. And I like to start at 5,000 and then go up from there. Typically, depending on the light that you're using, you're gonna be at around five to 5,600, and you're really gauging it based on what looks white and true to color. You don't want the image to be a little bit warm, and you don't want the image to be a little bit cold, but finding that sweet spot is gonna be determined by your preference. To make sure you have great sounding audio, just go into the menu, change it from auto to manual. Based on the mic that you have plugged into the camera, you're gonna set the audio accordingly. Now, if you're using external microphones that have power built into it, like I am using right now, I'm using the Rode Wireless Go 2, a very famous wireless mic. I actually only have the gain set to one, because there's power coming from this mic itself. And so based on the mics that you plug into this camera, you're just gonna find that sweet spot and you do wanna be around negative 12 decibels at the talking level that the person or yourself is talking at. But then once you dial that in, you're good to go. You can always access your audio settings now that it's set to manual in the main camera mode by hitting Q and then just adjusting it there accordingly, which makes it super nice and convenient. Now, if you follow those steps correctly, your shot should be looking and sounding drippy crispy, which is what I like to say it. Well, I hope you got value in this video. If you did, hit that like button and be sure to check the links down in the description below to everything I mentioned in this video. If you want to check out another video from us here at Think Media, just click or tap the screen. Can't wait to see you in a future video. Peace.